My name is Brian Houston, and I'm a fellow in advanced heart failure and transplantation at Johns Hopkins Hospital, and I'd like to discuss our article, Volume Overload in Heart Failure, an Evidence-Based Review of Strategies for Treatment and Prevention, which will be published in the September issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings Journal. This article was really born out of conversations and questions which came up between myself and co-authors every day on rounds as we grappled uh, in treating patients with acute decompensated heart failure. And we felt that uh, if these questions came up repeatedly for us, uh, that we should, uh, not only for ourselves, but for our readers, uh, provide a systematic review of the evidence base uh, looking at these questions. As you know, the population of patients with heart failure continues to grow every year, and volume overload is the number one reason for admission for this patient population. So we felt that this review would be useful and timely. We focused on the cornerstone of therapy uh, for patients with acute decompensated heart failure, and that is loop diuretics. Intriguingly, we found that while large clinical trials were lacking, small, observational, at times non-randomized studies suggest that torsamide may be a superior option to other available loop diuretics. And this is due not only to its higher and uh, more reliable bioavailability, but also due to a tendency to activate the neurohormonal axis less than other loop diuretics. Again, I'd like to reiterate that a large clinical trial investigating this question is required before we can definitively say that torsamide is a superior option, but that the small studies available certainly generate that hypothesis. Next, we looked at mode of administration of loop diuretics, focusing on the recent DOSE study, which showed that a continuous intravenous infusion of diuretics provided no added benefit to um, intravenous bolus administration. Next, we focused on two medications which routinely made their appearance in our questions on rounds every day, and that is dopamine and nasiratide. First, we found that the Ascend HF and the Rose AHF trials both cast aspersion on the routine use of nasiratide in the treatment of acute decompensated heart failure. Next, we found that the Rose AHF and the DAD HF studies both showed no benefit to the routine use of low dose dopamine for heart failure patients with volume overload. Thus, it seems that nasiratide and dopamine have limited, if any, role in managing volume overload in patients with acute decompensated heart failure. We next focus on recent studies of ultrafiltration, which shows that while ultrafiltration can indeed remove fluid uh, from patients with acute decompensated heart failure, and likely has a role in patients who are diuretic refractory, clinical studies show that for the large population of patients with heart failure, there is no benefit for ultrafiltration compared to more intensive and optimal regimens of diuretics. We then spend time discussing the intriguing and controversial recent observational and clinical studies which have failed to demonstrate a benefit of sodium restriction in patients with heart failure. Clearly, this is a controversial finding which challenges years and years of conventional wisdom, and further studies are needed before a definitive conclusion can be reached. Finally, we discuss the promising horizon of implantable hemodynamic monitoring devices for patients with both acute decompensated heart failure and chronic heart failure, uh, and the role of these devices in management and prognosis will certainly evolve over the next five to ten years. We believe that this review can hopefully serve as a distillation of the current state of knowledge regarding the therapeutic approach to volume overload in patients with heart failure. We also believe that this should serve as a call to arms to clinical investigators to answer some very fundamental questions in this very large patient population. These, finding answers to these questions can have enormous therapeutic clinical impact. For example, are all loop diuretics indeed created equally? Does sodium restriction matter either in an acutely decompensated patient or in a patient with chronic heart failure as an outpatient? Which patients will benefit from ultrafiltration or implantable hemodynamic monitoring devices? Only through rigorous scientific inquiry will we be able to answer these questions and provide guidance to patients and physicians struggling with heart failure and volume overload. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the article. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. 
Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.